Hi, my name is Anil Nair and I'm an aerospace engineering student here at UCLA. And I'm going to help you by going over some math concepts and examples. Good luck. This is the concept video for the derivatives of inverse and logarithmic functions. So, um, we have um, a function f and it is 1 to 1 and differentiable um, with an inverse um, we call this f negative 1x so an example of an inverse is uh, we have uh, for lines let's say we have f of x equals 1 third x the inverse is um, 3x or uh, if we have f of x equals x to the third, our inverse is uh, cube root of x. So if we have a function with an inverse, and this quantity, f prime of f inverse x, not equal to zero. Then, and you'll see why if we need this, then we have this relation. The derivative of our inverse function, which is what we're trying to find, um, equals 1 over f prime of f to the negative 1 x. So that's why this can't be zero. We can't have a zero in our denominator. So in plain English, what this is saying is uh, the slope of the inverse at x equals 1 over the slope of the function at y. And y is f inverse. So, um, let me try to convince you with a simple function, uh, like some lines. So, uh, we have a function f of x equals um, 3x. Um, and to find the inverse of this, we swap the positions of f of x and x. Well, we make x equal 3 of x, or f inverse, and then we solve for f inverse, so f inverse becomes one-third x. So, if you look at this, the derivative of f inverse equals one-third, and the derivative of a regular function is so as you can see, the derivative of f inverse equals 1 over the derivative of f. And technically, this is evaluated at f inverse of x, but um, since we have 3, uh, it's a constant. Uh, it doesn't matter where it's eva evaluated. Um, so yeah, and you can figure this out graphically too with lines and uh, should make sense. Um, so we use this to find the derivative of functions that are inverses of functions we already know the derivative. So if we're trying to find the derivative of the ln function, for example, um, we take the derivative. Um, we define, sorry, first we have to define that f of x equals e to the x. So we know our inverse is l of x. So, for taking the derivative of l of x, we're taking the derivative of f inverse of x. And that means that we're taking 1 over the derivative of f 
at f inverse. Well, we know f prime from the last video is e to the x. So we have 1 over e to the x uh, evaluated at f inverse of x. But we know f inverse is ln x. So um, e to the ln x is just x because they're inverses of each other. So the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Um, and if you have a log with a different base, let's say a, log base a of x, um, you can use change base formula to rewrite both of these as ln. So ln x over ln a. And if you wanted to find the derivative of this log base a of x, you would just be taking the derivative of ln x over ln a. 1 over ln a out. So the derivative of a log with any base equals 1 over ln a, ln a times x. And uh, we have other inverse functions such as uh, arc sine x, which we can also write as inverse sine, um, and we can get a derivative for all these, so I'm not going to calculate all of them, um, let's be different ln, but I'll just list them, so the derivative of inverse sine is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared, and then the derivative of inverse tangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared, and the derivative of inverse secant is 1 over absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And then derivative of the coversion of all these, so inverse cosine of x is just the negative of what it is for inverse sine x. So negative 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared cotangent would be, or inverse cotangent, would be negative 1 over 1 plus x squared, and derivative of inverse cosecant is negative 1 over absolute value of x times x squared minus 1. So, yep, that's it for inverse derivatives.